And reports say that talks are underway for a three-day humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza in exchange for the release of about a dozen hostages, including six Americans. The U.S. National Security Council says that Washington has a way to communicate with Hamas, but it's refrained from giving more details over fears that it could jeopardize the process. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has repeatedly rejected calls for a ceasefire unless Hamas releases all the hostages that it's holding in Gaza. Some 240 people were taken captive on the 7th of October. That is when Hamas penetrated parts of southern Israel and killed more than 1,400 people. Airstrikes continue to pound Gaza City in the north amid intense street battles between Israeli troops and Hamas militants. Both sides claim to have inflicted heavy losses on each other. Residents in Gaza City say that Israeli troops are moving closer to two hospitals where thousands of displaced Palestinians have been seeking shelter. The number leaving the combat area has drastically risen this past week. Now, the military says that 50,000 civilians fled to the south on Wednesday. That's more than triple the day before. The UN rights chief has condemned Israel over its bombardment and its orders for Gazans to evacuate. UN aid chief Martin Griffiths describes the conflict as a wildfire that could spread across the region. The trickle of aid that's entering Gaza from the south is largely barred from reaching the north. It's estimated that hundreds of thousands of civilians trapped in the battle zone are facing a dire humanitarian situation. Basic supplies, they are said to be running out, while buildings are demolished by unrelenting Israeli bombardment. The Israeli army, however, denies that there is a humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. More than 10,500 Palestinian civilians have reportedly been killed since the war began about a month ago. Now, for more, Sarah Coates joins us. She's live for us in Tel Aviv. Sarah, the UN and other aid organizations as well, they keep warning of this dire situation on the ground. But Israel's military, they are now denying that there is a humanitarian crisis that's developed in Gaza. Why is that? What can, t what can you tell us? Well, look, Don, Israel is now saying that several challenges are being faced inside the Gaza Strip. We just heard from a spokesperson from COGAT, which is the defence ministry body handling civil affairs inside the Gaza Strip. He just spoke out saying that uh, these challenges are being faced, but says that Israel is facilitating aid, facilitating medical supplies and water and also humanitarian assistance for shelters, but says that Israel is in a war, a war that Hamas started. Now, uh, what we're seeing on the ground from all of these pictures and what we're hearing from human rights officials certainly paints a different picture. Uh, we heard from the UN human rights chief when he visited Rafa yesterday. He said it was a living nightmare. Now, we've also heard today from the World Health Organization, it says that around 33,000 children since mid-October have been presenting with severe diarrhoea caused by dehydration. And look, if you just look at the amount of trucks that have been coming through the Rafa crossing, it's generally less than 100 per day. And just to put that into perspective, normally around 500 trucks come through that Rafa crossing from Egypt into the Gaza Strip every single day. And when there are just so many people that are being forced from the north down to the south, many of them uh, have had to flee their homes, uh, a group say there's just simply not enough to go around. Sarah, meanwhile, there have been these reports about talks with Hamas to impose a three-day ceasefire of some sort. Do you know of any progress on this front? Well, look, we do understand that the CIA director, Bill Burns, he is in Qatar today to push these reported talks along. We know that uh, late last week he was in Israel. He then went to Egypt. Uh, and Qatar is really being seen as a mediator here. It was uh, the power that got these other hostages out just a few weeks ago. And Qatar has direct lines to Hamas, which is... Uh, 
why, of course, it is seen as just uh, so needed in these times. What we do understand, according to these reports, is that Egypt would be the one that would facilitate this potential three-day or two-day humanitarian or pause in fighting, I should say, or ceasefire, uh, while Qatar would be negotiating between Israel and Hamas to release 10 to 15 prisoners. Now, we do understand this could actually be a prisoner swap, something like elderly people for elderly people or kids for kids, for example. But, look, we don't really have uh, much more information at this stage, although reports do say that these talks are reaching a crucial stage. Sarah, thank you for that update. Sarah Coates there in Tel Aviv.